Welcome back, everybody. It's great to be with you here again at the home of Anathan Global Studios in beautiful Charlotte, North Carolina. This week, we begin a new teaching series entitled, Why Jesus? There are many questions we ask during our lifetime, such as, well, who was that who? Or what happened when? Or how come such and such? And while these questions are all really important questions of the mind, the most important question of the heart is why? I've had it explained to me that if our heart can be satisfied with the answer to the why question, then it will see its way through many tensions, many discomforts and many tribulations on its journey toward discovery. And perhaps the greatest why question we could ask is this, why are we here? I believe the answer to this question is intrinsically connected to the purpose of the world and its need for redemption and salvation. So without chasing a million rabbits down holes, I'll keep this series to one overarching question. If I were to write a position description for saviour of the world and I was interviewing candidates to fill that vacancy, I would be asking this question. Why would this person or system be the one who could fulfill that responsibility and what on earth would be their motivation for doing so? There have been and still are many such figures and or systems that are vying for your allegiance still today. Each are seeking to convince you that their way is the right way. They are seeking to fill the position vacant for saviour of the world. Some of those that exist include Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, Hedonism, Atheism, Nationalism, Materialism, Libertarianism, the list goes on. If I was on the HR team of heaven looking to fill the role of saviour of the world, a fair candidate to interview would be Jesus of Nazareth. Now, if he is indeed a candidate for selection, the fundamental question we need to ask is why? Why Jesus? All the other candidates and or systems for selection are seeking to demonstrate how they can be the saviour of the problems that occur in an already existing world. The first reason why Jesus is a viable candidate for consideration is he is the only candidate on the table that is claiming to be able to be saviour of the world that he made including the problems that exist within it. So let's dive on into this first week. There are many Bible verses we're going to explore in this series, so rather than take time on this video to read all of them, I will invite you periodically to press pause and go look over them for yourself. The first question that needs to be satisfactorily answered has to do with authority. Why Jesus? Let's take a look. The main book of the Bible we'll focus our time on is the Gospel of Mark. The reasons include, one, that it is considered the oldest of all of the Gospel writings, two, that it was written as a basic spiritual growth manual, and three, it can easily be divided into two halves. The first half is dedicated to who Jesus is, and the second half is dedicated to why he came. Okay, so back to authority. Mark chapter 8, 27 to 30 reads, Jesus and his disciples left Galilee and went up to the villages near Caesarea Philippi. As they were walking along, he asked them this question, Who do people say I am? Well, they replied, Some say you're John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say you are one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter replied, You are the Messiah. But Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. It's good for us to clear some things up as we prepare to interview Jesus. Some historical views about him are a little skewed and they include, but are not limited to, historical, secular, religious and biblical. So, the historical Jesus. This historical Jesus says that Jesus was an historical figure who made an impression on human history but is not alive today. 
The secular Jesus says Jesus was a great philosopher and indeed a wonderful teacher, but he was just the man. What about the religious Jesus? Well, the religious Jesus says Jesus is a distant being who watches over us, but there is no relationship with him. He's just out there somewhere. And of course, the biblical Jesus. The Jesus as revealed in the Bible describes Jesus as the Son of God, Savior of the world, and accessible for personal relationship. The biblical Jesus is revealed as someone who loves you deeply and one who has all authority in many different areas. Mark chapter 1 verses 21 to 22 reads, Jesus and his companions went to the town of Capernaum. When the Sabbath day came, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. The first question around Jesus is, does he have authority as a teacher? Clearly he has. The people who heard Jesus teach were amazed by his teaching. They were accustomed to teachers quoting religious authorities. Jesus referred to himself as the authority by saying, You have heard it said, but I say to you. Press pause and take a look, particularly in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 48. And secondly, Jesus has authority as a healer. A desperate woman came to Jesus, she had a hemorrhage, and reached out through a crowd to touch Jesus' robe in the hopes that she would be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped. You'll find this account in Mark chapter 5, verses 24 to 34. I invite you to press pause and check it out. Thirdly, Jesus has authority over nature. In a violent storm, Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves, and immediately they were stilled. All of creation obeys its creator. You'll find this account in Mark chapter 5, verses 35 to 41. Again, I invite you to press pause and check it out. Fourthly, Jesus has authority over the supernatural. Jesus was accosted by a man who was possessed by an evil spirit. Jesus commanded the evil spirit out of the man. The people were amazed that even evil spirits obeyed Jesus. This account can be found in Mark chapter 1 verse 23 to 28. Press pause, go and check it out. Fifthly, Jesus has authority over death. Jairus' little daughter had died. Jesus took the dead girl by the hand and told her to get up. The little girl was restored to life. This account is in Mark chapter 5 verses 21 to 24 and also it sort of continues into verses 35 and 42. You need to stop and press pause and check this out. It is amazing. The next we see Jesus has authority over eternal life. A paralyzed man was brought to Jesus. Jesus not only healed the man, but forgave the man's sins. Well, problem, only God can forgive sins. This was a claim by Jesus that he was in fact God. This accounts perhaps one of my favorite in the New Testament in Mark chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. I invite you to press pause and check it out. Lastly, Jesus has authority over your life. You'll find this account in Mark chapter 1, verses 16 to 20. Again, press pause, check it out. In this account, Jesus walked up to perfect strangers and invited them with a sense of authority to follow him. These people left their jobs and their lives to follow someone they had never met. Jesus has authority over every human life because he created every human life. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 28 reads, God said, let us make man in our image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Jesus also said in John 17 too, For you granted him, Jesus, authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. 
Mark is laying the first page of Jesus' resume down on the table. He is demonstrating that Jesus is not a mere man. His miracles demonstrate that he is the Son of God with all authority, the authority over all of life and existence. What is the motivation of Jesus to use his all authority? Is it that he wants to control everyone? Is it that he wants to instill fear or to destroy? No, it is none of these. The motivation for Jesus to exercise his authority is love, specifically his love for you. The book of John 15 verse 9 reads, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. This week, we have began asking the question, if someone was to fulfill the role of saviour of the world, who would it be? And we have picked up Jesus' resume and we are checking it out. This first session, we have discovered that he ticks the box of all authority. We have seen that he has authority as a teacher, as a healer, over nature, over the supernatural, over death and over your life. This week's activation is to read over the book of Mark, chapters 1 through to 5, and underline any questions you may have. If your microchurch facilitator can't answer them, then feel free to reach out to us here at info at where we will be glad to spend some time with you to help your heart answer the question, Why Jesus? Stick with us for week two of Why Jesus as we begin to explore what did Jesus do. Remember, God wants to take you further and deeper into encounters with his always perfect love for greater impact because he wants to love the world through you.